Friends, so this discussion um, will cover the Black-Scholes formula, where I'll explain very, very, very intuitively why we never use a Black-Scholes formula, and it's a mistake of interpretation. And the uh, piece, the, the prize uh, that was given to uh, Robert Merton and uh, Myron Scholes for their contribution to that formula is effectively not for the option pricing formula, but for the ar and certain argument that makes it the formula compatible with the economic theories of the time. Much more sophisticated formulas were discovered before, and in fact, the one we use is a version of the Bachelier formula. So let me start with some chronology here with Bachelier. So Bachelier, 1900. He was an option trader, <laughs> he was an option trader, and then he did the doctorate in 1900 with Poincaré, the great Poincaré. Uh, his doctoral thesis was on speculative markets. Poincaré hated him, so he got in trouble. Uh, he hated the thesis. Uh, he didn't have patience for, for these kind of things. Um, so he missed on his great contribution, both to option theory and to the Brownian motion, which preceded Einstein. And, um, like for a long time, nobody knew about him, till Kolmogorov uh, somehow mentioned them to someone uh, who mentioned them to someone, and it was discovered uh, by a collection of people that include Paul Kuttner at the time, a brilliant person who died prematurely, who was at Stanford, uh, one of the first people to write about the random character of stock prices. And, uh, and, and then, of course, uh, we discovered the Bachelier equation. So we use today a version of the Bachelier equation. Let me um, uh, very simply price an option uh, the way one needs to be broken. Pricing an option. This is a call price stock at 100. So call, let's say, I put the side price at 100. And it's going to be priced based on whatever, a bunch of parameters. We'll see what the parameters are. Uh, what is a call? A call is simply the payoff at, well, we have expiration date, let's say cap T, okay? And the payoff is gonna be at cap T of max S minus K to zero. Simply, let's see uh, option price. And for Bachelier, it's very simply the expectation of that at time t0. So we have time t0. I'm pricing an option, European option, for say three months, cap t. I'm pricing the option here. This is what I get. And of course, Bachelier understood very well that the as time moves on the option changes in value. And he intuited some properties of the Brownian motion uh, that way by understanding that the following. This is a stock price for period T. It's going to be, he assumed the known distribution. Let's ignore the mean. Which has mean and then has sigma. We use sigma square root of cap t minus t zero. Time to expiration. That is very important because this is three months. Something is two months away. You still have this distribution and so on. So How you know can we write the distribution very simply? The call, let's write k is going to be the integral of s minus k plus between zero. And if you, he uses Gaussian, so basically 
phi of s is the probability distribution of s ds. Okay, simply. Or you can remove that, change the function to s minus k, it's going to be worth zero elsewhere, from k to infinity. Okay. So that's simply the option price. And any modification since by the by the establishment has been at the level of changing what kind of distribution we have here at two levels. The first one is they discovered, so we're talking about phi of s, okay? The distribution of s, we said he assumed it's a Gaussian distribution, but the Gaussian has parameters mu and sigma, okay? His mu, he, he figured out the mu that, you know, it's the expectation of what will happen to the stock. Let's not linger on this because we're going to see electrodes got it for the mu. And the sigma, visibly, is your expectation of dispersion and how volatile the asset will be and can also be inferred from other option prices. Now, the first modification is that if S is normal, an asset is 100 has equal probability of 1 of 50 or 150. And if you remember my discussion of logs, that's not how it works. It should more likely be equally likely to 1 of 50 and 200. So, okay. So, first modification by generation of people, a collection of people, including Kuttner, Paul Simelson, all these, and especially. Uh, at Thorpe, the great at Thorpe, was to figure out the following. If the return of S, okay, follows a Brownian motion, okay, that's if the S over S, mu dt plus sigma dz, to use continuous time, stochastic differential equation. Instead of ds, a community for sigma dz, that would be the equivalent for Bachelier. I have here s cap t is going to be s to be zero, t minus one half of sigma squared delta t, or we'll use mu. Okay? We still haven't covered that mu. Plus sigma square root of time z, z being a simple distribute, a, a, a random noise. That's a normal zero one. That's a way to see it. So this is going to be the dynamics of this. Instead of having Bachelier dynamics, st is going to be st zero plus sigma. Uh, square root of time uh, z. And then as you see, as time gets smaller, you still have noise. You're just scaling it by square root of time. So the first modification, M1 modification one, is from normal to log normal. It makes sense for prices, but <laughs> as you see, it may not make sense for interest rates. Why? Interest rates tend to move by basis points. So when, 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 when rates are 100, they move up or down 25. But when they're at 600 basis points, they move up and down 25 as well. So we noticed that the Bachelier approach using normal works better. Now, second point is, what does it mean? What is the mean of the distribution? For that, the answer, way before Black-Scholes was already provided, I mean, after Bachelier, a few years after Bachelier, about two, two and a half decades after Bachelier, was provided by Keynes, John Maynard Keynes. Um, he discusses it in his book, A Treatise on Monetary Reform. But the way 
But he presented it in the Sunday, I think, the Sunday Business uh, Times as, as a simple article in the Sunday Times, the Sunday of London, the Times of London. So what he did, he said that SKT must move S0. This is the forward, okay? The return, the mu for the stock, is proportional to lending and borrowing in, uh, rates in that currency. So in other words, when I take uh, three months, so zero times, I'm writing the exponential. He didn't use the exponential. E, let's call this interest rate times T minus T0, OK? T minus T0. That's the exponent, okay? And of course, T0, zero. zero. So this, in other words, the three months forward has nothing to do with your expected return from the forward. It's simple arbitrage relationship. At the time he used GDP USD. He said, you borrow for three months, GDP say at 10%, you place in USD at 5%, so therefore, the differential roughly is going to be 5%. So the forward got to be adjust by 5% to the spot. For a stock, it's very simple. The difference, which we call carry, equals, very simply, equals uh, dividend rate minus your cost of funds. Cost of funds. Which by arbitrage again will flow to the one who can produce that relationship as a marginal uh, provider, which will be the, the risk free rate. Okay, so 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 far we saw two points about Bachelier log, normal log normal, okay, or rather than say uh, additive return versus proportional returns, because it doesn't have to be log normal, normal, it could be uh, some other distribution a lot of that distribution, okay? The, the second uh, problem is uh, we already, I mean, there was no mystery as to what forward rates we should be using, which is the arbitrage rate. And I'm sure Bachelier being a trader, writes it that way. In my second paper on the subject with Hogg, with Eskin Hogg, and I think it was published in 2008 or 2009, uh, Hogg and Taleb, or Taleb and Hogg, whatever, 2008, 2009, I don't know, I'm sure, uh, in the comments, uh, Espen, my friend Espen, who's and, and uh, uh, weight lifting uh, trainer and advisor on many matters and skiing uh, friend as well. So uh, Espen and I looked at how people priced options in the past, and effectively, they probably got that. How did they get it? Aha. Uh -huh. We'll see you. Next, how did we get it? Uh, we'll see uh, after we present the, the Fisher Black uh, Martin Scholes paper, we'll see it with um, my argument on put call parity with Emmanuel Durbin. So, so, now, uh, so, so far, let's take stock. Bachelier, Price an option is a trivial mathematical exercise. You can do it long hand. The expectation of the payoff of the option with a given time to maturity based on, <coughs> sorry, based on the process. So second point. So uh, redo. Uh, he used normal, not not normal. And didn't explicitly say anything about the mean, but it was great. He priced options that way. He was a trader. And we noticed traders were pricing options, uh, on and I, at a time, 1900, but they were pricing in the 1800 and 1700, using methodology similar to that, intuitively. Probably no written formula. Uh, there exists a paper, uh, paper by so, a so-called Bronzin, even earlier, that Produces the same formula, but let's say we call it Bachelier now until 
we figure out whether it should be called Bachelier or Bronzini, his predecessor. But 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 Bachelier uh, is the one that inspired all this generation of people to improve on the formula. So, and by the way, Bachelier was blackballed the second time by <laughs> giant and probably theory Paul Levy, who did the Levy process for. Uh, he was he was blackballed the second time, so the poor guy suffered <laughs> because he had a bad thesis, and when he was not supported by a thesis director, you don't get a good job. Ended up in Besançon and then some other uh, city. When at a time, if you're not in Paris, you're nobody. Paris est le désert français. Paris and the French desert. There's nothing. So, so I really didn't know <laughs> that we're going to be talking about him now, and. Uh, and for the centenary in uh, 2000, would have celebrations in Paris with anybody who's anybody who ever dealt with mathematical finance. So rest in peace, Bachelier. We're talking about you. We're going to keep talking about you. So Black Scholes. <laughs>